This video explains the statutory law relating to copyright ownership. One thing that is important to know is that the owner of a copyright object is not always the same person who created it. The copyright owner and the copyright author or maker may be different people. The starting point and general rule for copyright works is that the creator of the work, called the author, is the first owner of copyright. This is set out in Section 35 of the Copyright Act. This position can be altered by the author transferring copyright ownership to someone else, which is called an assignment. Assignments are covered in a separate video. There are three exceptions to the general rule, and I will go through each in turn. The first relates to employment. For works created by an employee in pursuance of their terms of employment, copyright will be owned by the employer. There are two aspects to this. First, the person must be an employee and not an independent contractor. Usually, this will depend on them working under an employment contract. Second, the work must be created in pursuance of the terms of their employment. This requires looking at the kinds of tasks the person has been hired to perform. If the creation of the work falls within these general tasks, and if the person has worked on it at their place of employment and during normal work hours, then the work will be owned by the employer. This exception can be altered by contract though, so your first point of call should be to check whether anything is said about intellectual property in the employment contract. So, for example, the policy at many Australian universities is that the university, as employer, claims copyright in the teaching materials produced by staff, but not in their research materials, such as the books and academic articles they produce. Those are owned by the individual academics. Such policies about the allocation of copyright ownership apply to staff under their employment contracts. The second exception relates to journalists and is set out in Section 35, Subsection 4 of the Copyright Act. Actually, this is a kind of exception to an exception because it applies to journalists who are employees. For employed journalists, the rule about the employer owning copyright in work produced, which I just outlined, will apply. Except that the Copyright Act provides that the individual journalist will own copyright for the reproduction of the work for inclusion in a book and reproduction of the work in the form of a hard copy facsimile made from a paper edition of a newspaper, magazine or similar periodical. Hard copy facsimile is defined to mean a copy in a material form which is visible to a human without the use of a device. It would therefore include a photocopied article, but not a digital copy viewed on a computer. The newspaper or magazine proprietor, or employer, is the copyright owner for reproductions associated with publishing the newspaper, magazine or periodical, and the other copyright rights. The third and last exception for commissioned works only applies to particular artistic works. The rule is that a person who commissions a portrait or engraving owns the copyright in the work. Additionally, a person who commissions a photograph for a private or domestic purpose will be the owner of that photograph. Private or domestic purpose includes family portraits and wedding photos. For all other commissioned works, especially works commissioned for a commercial purpose, including promotional photographs, website design and logos, the copyright owner will be the person who created the work. Again, these arrangements can be altered by contract. For example, a wedding photographer might take copyright ownership in the photos they take by a contract, or a business might take ownership in the work it commissions. The Copyright Act also provides that people may own copyright in a work jointly. Where the owners are joint authors, they must have produced the work together such that the contribution of each author is not separate from the contributions of the other authors. 
In other words, you cannot look at the work and be able to separate out what one person did from what the others did. So for example, if one person writes the music for a song and another writes the lyrics, they will not own copyright in the song jointly. Rather, the first person will own copyright in the musical work and the second person will own copyright in the literary work. However, if they both write the music and lyrics together such that their contributions are not separable, they will be joint authors. People can also be joint copyright owners by agreement, assignment, or through a will. Joint owners own as tenants in common. This means that any one owner may sue someone for copyright infringement without adding the other owners as plaintiffs. However, the consent of both or all owners is needed to give a third party permission to use the work. These permissions are called licenses and are discussed in another video. For part 4 subject matter, the first owner will be the maker of the subject matter. The relevant provision here is section 22 of the Copyright Act. For sound recordings, the maker is the person who owned the first record embodying the recording. Usually this is the record company. Where the sound recording is of a live performance, the makers include the performers. For cinemagraphic films, the maker is the person who made all the necessary arrangements for the making of the film. Usually this will be the producer of the film. For broadcasts, the maker is the person who provided the broadcasting service by which the broadcast was delivered. In other words, the relevant license holder. For published editions, copyright is owned by the publisher. See section 100 of the Copyright Act. Sections 97 and 98 of the Act provide that where a sound recording or film is commissioned, the owner is the person who commissioned the recording or film.